So welcome back. So in our uh, in our Python series today we are going to see what is virtual environment and uh, what is requirements dot txt file and w what are the uses of this and uh, how will we getting benefit out of these two concepts in Python. Okay, so let's first see about the requirements dot txt so it's a text file as the extension says that dot txt so requirement uh, now let's first understand what is the problem and then why we are choosing this particular feature so let's say that now we have this particular uh, project is there selenium with python project is there or else any specific like if you are doing the python development as well so you have uh, what you call written few of the uh, programming stuff and few of the files you have supporting files are there you have installed few of the packages as well related to your project now let's say you have got another team member in your um, in your organization who wants to take this particular project okay so normally the tendency is that any libraries that we are using into this particular uh, what you call python project we don't tend to uh, push that along with the git actually into the git repository so we normally do a git ignore to those uh, what you call libraries so whatever libraries we have uh, got it uh, under this v e e n v and then under this library we don't want to send this one along with our project into the centralized repository let's say git the reason is that these libraries might take lot of space and then it in uh, including with your own uh, what do you call the code base so now the question comes whenever a new person is pulling your code now they should be knowing what and all libraries you have used or what and all the python packages you have uh, used so like let's say that they should be knowing the version of the package like let's say selenium and the specific version if they want to install the pytest they need to understand what is the version of that so let's say i can just uh, ping or i can put it into the readme document and then that person has to now go through the readme documentation and then install those libraries one by one now let's say tomorrow i have upgraded the package now i have to update that readme file that okay this particular version of that particular file package i am using so that the next person has to again install that particular version okay so every time we have to create a documentation and then update that documentation right which is like a difficult right and then we have to install each of those python packages one by one okay so to avoid that the python have this concept called as requirements.txt okay so which we can just uh, uh, give along with our project so that we need not to give the library folder and then Python gives an option to install from that requirements.txt file. Let's first understand how to create this requirements.txt file. Okay. So for this particular project, which we are seeing currently, we have like two main libraries that we have used. So one is the Selenium and another is PyTest. You can see here. So these are the main two, uh, what do you call packages we have installed and with specific versions. Now let's first understand how do we create the requirements.txt txt file so for this we have to navigate to this terminal so as we know that pycharm has its own uh, terminal if you are not getting that you can right click on this panel and then you can click on this open in terminal so you will get that and because i am using virtual environment so i am getting the name of this environment as well okay so here now let's see how we can create this particular requirements.txt so we know that the pip pip is coming by default when we are installing the python okay so what we need to do pip and then we have to write or type freeze and then we have to give a pipe sign or like a you know, what do you call we have to so pip freeze means that it will gather the requirements and then we will be sending that to a particular file so that is the command actually we are using greater than symbol now here we need to specify the name of that particular file so which is requirements.txt file now if i click on enter you will see there is a new file should be created with a name called as requirements.txt so now let's see that so as you can see here it created automatically okay 
So now here uh, one thing to note always that this requirements.txt when we are using pip phrase it might give you some other dependencies as well like some python uh, related what you call dependencies which you might not need for that particular project actually. So it would be always recommended that you should be going over this particular what you call requirements.txt file and any unnecessary packages which you are not using. See why I am saying unnecessary. So let's say that at the beginning I was using this particular project and for feasibility study or for to experiment something I might have used some particular libraries. But after that, I'm not using that libraries anymore because I have chosen another library. Now, those file, those libraries, I would not have deleted from my project folder. OK, so that's where actually all these things will stay as it is. So whether you are using or not, if for the first time you have installed those packages, requirements.txt will capture those things. OK, so depending on that, you need to first go and cherry pick whatever items are required. Keep those things as it is. And then the other things you are free to remove those things from here. OK, so that is one thing. Always keep that in mind. Fine. Now we have generated this requirements.txt file. Now where should we use this one? Now let's see a practical usage of this one. Now let's say as a another team member you have created a new folder so let me just replicate or mock that particular stuff let's say under this particular folder structure i've created a new folder and i'm using a practice test some like this is again a new project i'm using but i want to take your code base like as i said or let's say that if i'm getting or pulling the code from the github repository OK, so now how do I do this? Now I have to go to this particular terminal. Now here what I will do first thing is that I have to create a virtual environment. So at the beginning when we have seen our first video on this Selenium with Python, we have seen how we can set up the Python in uh, PyCharm editor, right? So there we have used the PyCharm editors inbuilt a virtual environment feature but today we will be going ahead and see how we can create from the command line itself so now you can see here this practice test is a blank there is nothing is there now we will be creating a particular virtual environment here so for this we have to go to the python 3 so because i'm using mac operating system i have to use the python 3 because i have Python 2 and 3 both the versions are there if you are using Windows operating system you can use py instead of Python 3 and the rest commands are as usual same only so whatever I am using here you can just use those things to install that so sometimes the pip might not be upgraded properly so you can upgrade the pip command or pip tool actually by using the Python 3 now whenever I do this one it says that the requirement already is satisfied. It means that that particular file is already there. Now what I will do here, I will type another command Python 3 hyphen M and then I will be creating a virtual environment and then I will specify a name of that particular file. So most of the people give uh, don't give the, a dot actually while giving the folder name, but I would suggest to give as a dot v e n v name whatever it is there because this will um, normally we don't tend to delete that so dot means it's a hidden folder so it is optional you can give regular name or else you can v e n v and then hyphen any name that you want to give you can give okay hyphen is also not compulsory i'm just giving virtual environment any name of your preference you can give that now at this moment let's say i'm giving v e n v only OK, so this is command V E N V or the parameter and this is my folder name. OK, and then I will be pressing enter. OK, so now the V E N V folder got created. OK, now to see that what I will do, I will go here and you, as you can see, there is nothing is there. But let me open the hidden folders and you can see V E N V folder got created. Let's go to this library 
Python 3.8 which is currently installed on my machine and if I see the site packages none of the what you call uh, packages are installed yet it is just the Python default package is installed here no selenium no pytest as a unit testing framework is already installed so I have two options I can just go and manually I can install pip install hyphen u selenium pip install hyphen u uh, pip and then some other packages also tomorrow I need I have to go one by one and then install those things and I need to know the exact version what the existing project was using so that is a bit difficult right so that's where actually we have to use the requirements.txt one thing I missed here I need to activate this particular venv so for this what I will do I'll go to source and then I will say dot avnv and then I will say bin and there is a activate command is there or it's basically a, uh, if you see here let's go to this and bin and this is activate so this is basically a command uh, what you call command is there so if you double click this one it will be activating that is what I'm doing here and now if I do a enter now virtual environment is created you can see here dot venv if in case of uh, your windows operating system instead of the source you will say call and then you have to give the path of that activate dot bat file okay I will be sharing the commands into the description below fine now my virtual environment is ready now the next thing I need to do that I need to install the requirements dot txt file okay install from requirements dot txt file now for this if you see this new folder I don't have any uh, what do you call any requirements dot txt file so what I will do let's say I'm copying this one now here I will be pasting it here now the thing is that along with because I can do a git pull these things will come automatically but I don't have a git project that's why I'm just for demo purpose I'm showing how can I install from this requirements.txt file so as I told always do a hand pick and then you have to pick up whatever the necessary libraries you want to install rest everything you can remove it so just to show that I'm removing few of the uh, what you call libraries from here and then I'm keeping only these two particular uh, what you call files only now saving this one and then going back so I have now made a final decision on my requirements.txt file now let's see instead of going one by one how can I install uh, at one shot actually so for this there is another command actually which you can use and that command is pip again you need to install the pip so what you need to do pip and then you will say install hyphen r r is for requirement so you need to provide the path of that requirements.txt file because it is under the parent folder or parent directory of this particular project I'm just writing pip install hyphen r and the name of that file name and path of that file now if I click on enter you can see all the libraries that are that are there inside this particular requirements.txt file got installed now to verify that let me just go to the hidden folder go to this virtual environment name whatever we have created go to the live python 3.8 site packages and then you can see before the selenium and pytest was not there but now these two libraries got installed now what you can do you can open this particular file or this particular project into your PyCharm and you are good to go with your code base so you can just download the git project or you can copy paste from your pen drive or anything or hard disk and you can just execute that by using the Python command or whatever uh, the way you know to run your Python project you can run that okay so this is very simple but effective way of doing this stuff so in in organizations they follow these things you have to create a requirements.txt file for the future use when a new person or let's say that if your local directory or local project got corrupted then you can use this particular what you call way to create a virtual environment and then install all the packages from the requirements.txt file okay so that you need not to worry about what kind of uh, packages they are using what kind of version because see the version which they which your existing project is using if you are not using exactly same version then you might get a compatibility issue while running your test so that's why it is always recommended to use this way actually requirements.txt file installation there is another way also 
like if you go to this uh, so because we have done everything from the command line so it is common irrespective of whatever the editors you are using actually whether you are using sublime or uh, like uh, anything yeah, any of your preferences you are using python editors even pycharm has its own uh, what do you call way of creating the requirements.txt file if you go to this tools menu you will see something here called as a sync python requirements so here you can create you can give the name of your file and then you can click on ok now another thing to note is that whenever you are adding new libraries let's say you installed a third uh, third package let's say that third fourth fifth always make sure that you are doing a pip freeze again okay so this is always recommended because if you have installed a new packages and you didn't do freeze then this requirements.txt will not be updated automatically so you can just do that so whenever you are pushing your code back to your github repository always make sure that you are looking once to this requirements.txt file so this way what you can do you can reduce the space of your project by doing a git ignore to this actual library folder and you push this requirements.txt file along with your project so this only one notepad will save you from uh, different kind of uh, issues actually unexpected issues so this is basically I can say uh, similar to if you are from the Java background uh, you might be knowing about the Maven project actually so in Maven we provide the dependencies right the particular version and then the dependencies now when a new person is picking up they they actually not take all the jar files they just take that uh, pom.xml file and then they use the maven uh, what do you call plugins by using any java editor and they install the packages the same thing if you are using uh, c sharp then i think you have package.json uh, in the package.json it will be all the key value pair all your libraries will be there or uh, we call it as a new get packages so depending on that if you do a restore from that file then visual studio will download all those packages so every programming language uh, uh, languages are same uh, and different in a way they handle it but the functionalities remain same because they have to serve the programmers right okay so that's pretty much it about the creation of virtual environment and uh, creating a requirements.txt file and how you can install the packages at one shot by using the pip install command okay so hope this session helps and uh, stay tuned to our youtube channel we will be updating some more topics okay thank you for watching